Hello. Today we will talk about neoliberalism, which is the contemporary stage of the development of such a basic theory of international relations as liberalism. In other words, we will talk about liberalism after the end of the Second World War and the end of the Cold War. In general, there are three stages of the liberal theory development. The first is called liberal internationalism or the Enlightenment period of liberalism, which is associated by such great names, such great philosophers as Immanuel Kant, Hugo Grotius, uh, John Locke, Jean-Jacques Rousseau and others. The second is liberal idealism, uh, which is liberalism which emerged after the end of the First World War or the Great War, which basically transformed the then international system and which laid the foundation of the international relations science. And finally, the third stage about which we will talk about now is neoliberalism, the contemporary stage of the liberal uh, paradigm. And unlike realism, where classical or political realism is profoundly different from neorealism, these are basically two different concepts, two different theories, there is no fundamental difference between the old and new liberalism. Neoliberalism offers pretty much the same assumptions and approaches about how the world functions, why states behave in the ways as they behave, and applies these basic assumptions, the same liberal assumptions, to the contemporary environment. Above all, to the conditions of globalization and to the environment after the Second World War and after the Cold War. And as neoliberalism continues the same assumptions, it makes sense to remember, to remind what these assumptions actually are. What is neoliberalism talking about? And from the very beginning, it is extremely important to emphasize that liberalism as a theoretical uh, paradigm is based on the Christian tradition, on the idea of salvation and the coming of the kingdom of the God, or basically a better world. And unlike realism, which claims that man does not change, that the hum human nature never changes, and thus the world cannot be changed, it is always the same, the basic rules of behavior of man and of state are eternal and they never change. Uh, liberalism claims that uh, human nature can be improved. And this uh, results us to uh, very important basic propositions. This leads us to the basic propositions of the liberal theory. And the first major proposition is that the world, as the human nature, can and should be improved. Thus, Unlike realism, which studies the world as it is, which studies reality, and which claims that uh, states have to adapt to this never-changing world, liberalism is focused uh, on studying how the world should be. Not how the world is, is, but liberals from the very beginning always have a very clear, or less clear, but still an understanding, a vision of dream of how the world should be and what needs to be done to get there. What does it mean to improve the world? What does it mean to create a better world, right? Which is the essence of liberal paradigm. It means less conflicts. It means avoiding wars. It means that cooperation but not conflict should be the prevailing form of international relations. How to make it? Again, liberalism gives us the answer through rules, norms, institutions, and values, which should in the, in the mind of liberalism, govern international relations, regulate behavior of states. Thus, liberalism as a science, as a theoretical concept, focuses on international law and their role in international relations, on international institutions and the spread of democracy. The ideal of liberalism is creating a rule-based international order, an international order in which behavior of states will be governed not just by force, but by rules and norms and institutions. And the second major proposition of the liberal theory, which is also based to the theoretical Christian uh, foundation of liberalism, is that man, human individual, is the centerpiece of the universe. Individual, not a state, is the major unit of international relations, is primary, whereas the state is secondary. Individual is the major value and the starting point of all social relations according to liberalism, including international relations. This means that liberalism is talking about and studying man-centric, not a sense-centric uh, uh, reality, 
uh, and, con and applies a man-centric approach to international relations. It considers individual to be primary, whereas state to be secondary, whereas realism, on the contrary, considers state uh, as primary and all the rest is secondary. Thus, from the liberal viewpoint, international relations should benefit man, not just the state, man being the major value. And this means that the value of states as actors of international relations is much less in the liberal paradigm as it is in the realist paradigm. And there can be and are other forms of organizations of individuals in international relations beyond state, such as non-state actors, such as NGOs, non-governmental organizations, such as transnational corporations, business companies, and of course, international organizations. Thus, as a theoretical approach to IR, liberalism, neoliberalism, focuses on these other actors of international relations beyond states, uh, and on limitation or overcoming of state sovereignty. How should we overcome state sovereignty for the benefit of man in conditions when state threatens the freedom, liberty, or prosperity of individuals? And for, of course, uh, liberalism studies this overcoming of state sovereignty for the sake and benefit of individual.